Hey there YouTube, I'm Yukitsu, this is the Yukitsu Times, welcome to my channel, welcome back to a little bit of uh, Total War Warhammer 2. So, um, fought a big battle over here, but it ended up being a lot less interesting than I thought it was going to be. I just sat in a corner, uh, and killed off, uh, like, three stacks of undead, because they're not capable of dealing with that shit. Um, an, a real-life player probably could, because they would basically subvert that by summoning stuff behind you, but AI does not do that, even on the hardest difficulty. So, um... I'm going to be clearing these guys out here. I'm going to be fighting this one over here. This one might be a little bit more interesting. I kind of want to actually figure out just how much better uh, the Swordmasters are than the Graveguard and stuff like that, just by throwing this uh, elite army stack into these guys and see what happens. Because all that's going to happen is, like, I just charge straight into these guys. And realistically speaking, like, Graveguard should get completely butchered. Like not even close contest sort of situation there. Uh, if we take a look at the stats here, we've got um, pretty similar melee defense to fight, despite the fact that these guys are a two-handed sword unit compared to a shield and sword unit, which is gross. Uh, the melee attack is 55 here. They've also got the uh, martial prowess bonus, so their um, melee defense is even higher. You know, God damn it. There we go. Okay, um, martial prowess. So, you know, more and more melee defense and more melee attack. Uh, their weapon strength, 42, and uh, bonus versus infantry. Like, those are gross numbers there. Um, these Graveguard with Great Weapons are, like, half the stats in most areas there. So, not only do they get wrecked in this sort of matchup, but they get wrecked really, really hard. So, uh, it's going to be interesting just to see what that looks like, even though I don't think that's going to be an overall very interesting battle. Um, over here in Canada, uh, we've got all this nonsense going on here. I'm still going to be pushing my way through here. They did injure one of my units, I don't, or agents, I don't really care that much, though. But, uh, yeah, we're going to hopefully be able to do something out here. I'm going to level you up here. Um, probably go with that, maybe. Well, in fact, let's go ahead and try and steal some technology here while we're at it. Got plenty of cash for this. Failure. Damn it. All right, well, whatever. So, despite that, uh, we should be able to reach Grand and take that this turn. I'm not going to show you that battle because it's going to be a really dumb uh, siege again. We have a lot of those really dumb sieges that are boring to watch, so we're not going to worry about that. Um, but we will go ahead and uh, see what it looks like walking over there. We can see there's like three armies stacked up back here, which is kind of stupid actually. But um, So we're going to have this going on. This number is, like, this auto-resolve is ridiculous. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and hold the siege here. We'll go fight that manually so I can sort of shoot down everyone on the walls there, which is how you deal with that as the High Elves. Um, got tons of stuff to build right now, actually, which is pretty good. Uh, I think we go with this one. I think we go with this one. Grand and Asherak are going to be the uh, two places to make that place uh, complete. Fine, whatever. Uh, this guy needs to get I over to, to the Great Arena, I think. No point in him hanging out there. No point in hanging out in Harganeth over here. Actually, I might go back over and try and retake the Ming encampment. Mung encamp Mung encampment. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking of a different game right now. I might also try to kill this little bastard here. What's my odds here? 72% chance of positive outcome. Success. Just wounded, though. Unfortunate. All right. Down here we got uh, these battles. I'm going to have to fight those again. I'm not really too concerned about that, though. We, fight. Uh, we got tons of stuff that have to be built up here. Um, going to wait till Harganeth can be upgraded, though, so we're not going to be upgrading anything here. What about, up, what about over around here? We can upgrade one of these, I guess. It's, I'm not actually taxing this place yet, so... Um, can I, though? So could I retreat this guy down to Albion and then have him... Actually, it looks like I don't even need to have him in Albion, because we're in positive... Actually, no, I've activated uh, one of these things. Although, we'll have another... What is it? Like, two... So, it goes from five to eight. So, I'll have three more public order here once we get that finished uh, in Albion there. And then the Palace of Princes up here is going to be... Like, how much of this is from characters and uh, army? Nine of it is from characters. Okay. And military presence is six. So, it will swing by... Uh, 15 plus 4, so it'll swing by 19, so it'll go down to negative 7. Damn. Okay, so I do need to keep upgrading these, uh, these promenades here. I need to upgrade it actually to the completely cap one. And then I also probably need to add in an anti-corruption building as well, so... Yeah, he's gonna have to be up here for a bit longer, unfortunately, but fortunately Albion itself is doing pretty well. Um, okay. So, I mean, I might as well upgrade the, uh, happiness in the region. 
or the income in the region just because I am um, garrisoning it and I am taking money from it right now. So might as well kark, kark, kark whatever. I don't know. Uh, that's the Harkoneth region. Dargoth back here. This place already is being upgraded to Frozen City, so we could probably actually go and uh, upgrade Dargoth. Get that going there. Nagarond here, the capital. Okay. So I need to take uh, Kalora and Har Har Kaldura, which is quite a distance away, actually. So we're starting to get pulled in really weird directions to get these uh, last few places, it looks like, but it's not much I can do about that, in all honesty. Okay, gonna have some problems there, that's fine. Um, this place is looking pretty okay, thankfully. All right. And we're down on cash, okay. So. The Asa are ageless. Looks like I can sort of just march over here to the temple of Al Ad Adayath or whatever the hell. Um, I'm kind of wondering actually though if I don't want to get down to the ancient city of Quintex. The direction to get down to these places in the south here is a little bit awkward. But I do need to start making my way down towards, like, the Lizardmen territory so I can get to Hexawaddle within, like, apparently 13 turns, which is not ideal. Um, so I think we actually redivert this army down to the south here. Um, we probably even have to go ahead and uh, horse march to just do it a bit faster. I don't need to replenish this army stack at all, so we don't need to worry about that. Go ahead and stop taxing this province we here. Ready for action. We march on! Okay, um, we march. yeah, I think we might as well head here. I don't think I'm going to take attrition Treading over here. Lightly, resting on and my this journey. means that I should be able to get to the ancient city of Quintex without having to uh, do anything else here. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to fight these battles uh, real quick here. These ones are going to be pretty boring. Actually, let's just do this one first. We'll do this one uh, right away here. I don't want him to run away, so I'm just going to attack with this one stack here. He's going to run away anyway, isn't he? Bastard. Okay. Onward. Somehow he didn't actually destroy, like, Port Alistor because he backed off for some reason, like an idiot, no mercy. Um, when he saw my armies headed towards him, so that was kind of interesting. Um, undead armies are kind of neat on the battlefield because you can, generally speaking, just completely wipe them out uh, since they don't flee. The anyway, let's get in, the, in on this battle and see uh, how, how this looks. All right, so here we are. Um, we gonna go ahead and uh, pepper them a little bit with our bolt throwers, but that really is not that relevant. Um, as far as the way this battle is going to shake down, I suspect. Let's get our uh, Swordmasters sort of stretched out here. Keep our Phoenix Guard sort of in reserve. Um, throw them down wherever the sort of enemy cavalry is going to go. And we'll have them sort of work in tandem with the Silver Helms, of course. I think this guy is on foot. Yep. All right. So just going to go ahead and uh, rattle, rattle up uh, those guys into a single blob there. But um, Bolt Throwers. Yeah, so Graveguard, strong binding there. The Graveguard with the great weapons are the sort of threat unit, um, and alternatively we could aim at cavalry, but I don't really see... I don't remember if this army had me. I was not paying attention to that. Uh, the Crypticals are terrible against armored units, so I don't really have to worry about them any. I'm going to turn the fire at will off on these guys, actually. Uh, yeah, too late, actually. All right. Eh, I kind of want to aim sort of more at that uh, cluster, but... I can't believe how much damage we actually did do to those cryptals on a single volley. Just one volley and they're already just completely screwed. Uh, wow, and we even killed a Grave Garden one. Uh, well, I'm not actually sure these guys had... Uh, maybe. Yeah, all these units seem to have one, one or two dead, so... Clearly they already had some uh, damage to them before this uh, battle happened. Alright. starting to spread out just because that unit that we're firing at, aiming at there is uh, being spread out and uh, not really all together. But uh, yeah, these Grave Guard are getting pretty pounded just by the uh, Bolt Throwers. The only problem is that obviously it doesn't cause kills, but less relevant against Undead since they can recover those kills just as well as they can recover uh, damage, so it really doesn't make a difference against Undead. Look at that clustering though, that's the AI being an absolute brilliant genius. Skeleton Spearmen coming in hundreds of units, 120 unit blocks. 
kind of gross, really. That's the one problem with these guys is that they do have a really strong poison on their attack there. And uh, I didn't pay attention to my own sort of advice there, and we've been firing at things that are not the Graveguard with great weapons. So either way, though, let's go ahead and charge in on this. I don't really have to give a crap. Um, I'll send you out this way. I don't really think we have to worry about that too much, and we're going to use you guys as sort of flankers. General, um, I think we just charge him straight at uh, that guy. Even though these guys are pretty good against characters, typically speaking, not really that worried about it. We'll fire at their uh, general back there. I'm going to actually divert some of these units so that they're hitting slightly different things than they are sort of naturally inclined to hit. I'm going to have you guys actually come around to the side here. Which is probably pretty irrelevant. You can actually see that these guys on the charge there, look at that. Absolutely freaking mashed. Let's see what happens as soon as we charge in on them in the rear here with these guys. This is kind of the side actually, but uh, well, they're getting a buff here or they're getting invocations, so they're going to recover a little bit here. Let's see here. I'm not sure what that spell is that they've got on them, but it doesn't look like invocation to me. Alright, so this unit here, I, this is what I want to see getting hit. Critical binding basically immediately. Crumbling. Critical binding. Yeah, these guys are getting uh, just, just absolutely mashed apart by that uh, rear charge there. Cool. Oops. You guys should not be running into an enemy general for no good reason. Um, I want you actually to be helping out with that instead. Oh, these guys are done. Eagle Claw. It shall be done. All right, Eagle's Claws. Let's get you out of movie combat because that is definitely not where I want you guys. How are those graveyard doing? They're crumbling. Their general is getting completely mashed on. Uh, gonna try and charge our cavalry into this guy, not because we actually care too much about him, but because I don't want um, him going after my bolt throwers, simply because they don't have very much protection. And uh, this will just sort of stop them from doing anything too tricky. But yeah, these sword masters are just brutal in combat. 61 kills. These are against elite units too, so we're not. I'm not too surprised about their performance in all honesty, but it is nice to verify that the AI does not cheat quite that hard. All right. So this guy should be dead in just a second there, and that'll finish off the rest of their army. There we go. Yeah, we, we did a good job there, I think. So, yeah, it is good to know that these Elven Elites are just really quite strong. So, anyway, uh, let's get back to the campaign map. I'll clear out those other battles, and we'll uh, see how things are going. Alright, and we are back. So, I'm not entirely sure if I want to head down to the Strigoi coast here and uh, start taking them out. Um, it probably would make sense for me to eventually do that. Looks like we're also at war with the Nakrat Brotherhood, which I don't remember being at war with, but um, suffice to say, we've got a long trek ahead of us from Lothurn if I want to head down to Kofor. Um, I'm not sure how much I think it's worth it, but it probably, I might as well. I might as bloody well. Uh, I've got nothing really else to do with these armies now that the Nagarathi are starting to um, trickle off and um, not attack me anymore. So broadly speaking, I should be able to just get through um, this this uh, playthrough without having to worry about that anymore too much. And we're almost at the point, like once Grand is activated and I've got this guy that's got Industrialist um, pumping out extra cash through Grand's um, gold mine, because there is a gold mine in Grand, We've got a very, very decent ability to build another army, and um, realistically speaking, we're already doing pretty well in terms of that. We've uh, foiled the Dark Elves' um, ritual here, so they cannot successfully uh, do their whatever victory thing. So I don't have to worry about fighting that, but I do have to get down to Hexwaddle. They are significantly weaker than me on the uh, thing here, but that doesn't mean I can just send the one stack down there and actually uh, beat them necessary. Yeah, opposing ritual failed. Now ground ritual of trusted siblings. Um, I really do though need to get down there and start wrecking face against the hexwaddle. Uh, otherwise, they're gonna be able to sort of just carry the game and, and win that way. Um, getting up north here into Ashrak through Grand, I don't remember if there's anywhere past there that's useful, um, but we'll sort of see there. Hexwaddle is doing a really great job of clearing off these uh, chaos invasions because they're fairly small, but. Um, 
I'm hoping that something is going to take out one of their cities and cause their um, cause their ritual to fail. Clan Pestilence looks like they're going to be starting their ritual probably pretty soon, but it looks like they haven't started it yet. Scheme of Doom. Uh, if I recall correctly, yeah, that destroys a settlement without having to siege it or anything like that. It basically reduces it down to level 1, and then you have to level it all the way back up again. It's brutal. Um, it's kind of gross, but it doesn't really matter that much. So, yeah, like, this is the part where I'm trying to think of, like, the best way to actually stop Hexwaddle, and I think what I'm going to actually just have to do is win an improbable string of victories, which I don't like having that as my strike. Look at Strigo, is their power bar zero? Um, but yeah, like, I don't like that being my plan. Uh, it's a really crappy plan, basically. Um, and it basically... Anytime you're you're in a military style situation and it's like, okay, I just need to win an incredibly large string of highly improbable victories, you've probably already lost. And you you see this with like the brilliance of Hannibal uh, Barca, where he's like, oh yeah, no, I just I just have to commit to winning like a million battles against Rome and they'll give up after I've won a million of them. But if I lose even a single one of them, completely boned up the river, no paddle. Um, yeah, that's going to be my strategy for attacking Rome. Sounds good. So he was a very good tactician, but he was not a very good general. I'm a good general, but I'm not a very good tactician sort of thing. So it's going to be fun. Um, let's go ahead and grab up the wheat here. Can I offer assistance? All right. Now, again, I do want to attack Ashrak, uh, just so that I get that out of the way. But ultimately, I'm going to have to start getting around to the north here. I've actually sent another army to go recolonize the Hmong encampment, even though I don't really want it. King and country. Um, but whatever. Alright, so I don't think that either of those stacks are within reinforcement range. So it's going to be interesting seeing what happens when I take this, but um, For I'm going to do it in a circle for now. We're going to see what else is going on around the map here. Okay, so that's something we're doing. I wonder if I can reach down here. So getting a little bit of map knowledge down this region is going to be super useful for me. Um, let's head over to the ancient city of Quintex. Uh, we've got the dragon stack here. Uh, this one's really, really capable of just taking out these cities like this without having to worry about it. So that won't be something I'm going to have to worry about, really. Um, have we gotten any, any more vision? I'll probably start seeing a little bit more once I've taken out the ancient city of Quinex, but apparently this doesn't count as coastal for whatever the hell reason. I don't really know. Uh, looks like I also have to get Iron Spike. Where the hell's Iron Spike? I don't even know where it is. Wow, okay. Well, that's fun. Um... So beyond that, we're going to have to get down to the Fallen Gates from there to the um, model of the Fallen Gods, and then we have to hit... It'd probably be easiest if we hit Skeggy with something. It looks like they've got, like, two big stacks there on Skeggy. Um, what might be even easier is to get my um, Elite Swordmaster Blob over there. I think I've got 13 turns to do it. So that probably is our better choice. Let me get this stack over to Lothurn because it's going to be Entering faster to depart from there. We're going to just bring this up to a 20 stack with the more Lothurn Seaguard. I do like the fact that these guys are already all uh, gold chevrons, so we can immediately start using the uh, benefits that we can uh, have for gold chevron units. Uh, there's a certain bonus that you get for having them at that rank, so um, all pretty good there. And we've kind of, like there's kind of nothing left up here since I sort of killed everything, so... What we're going to do is bring this guy down to Angariel, get the units back up to full. We're going to send that stack over towards the, um, towards wherever, uh, the, the Lizardmen, and hopefully I'll be able to do something there. Um, but, yeah, just one Doom stack of, uh, hero units, or, or powerful units is kind of a weird thing to send down there. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to do it. Um, tap through all our heroes here. All right, Fortress of the Damned, we can get this leveled up here finally. Perfect. I did actually notice, like, we had a whole bunch of settlement upgrades available. Uh, I think we wanted in the Circle of Destruction to wait till we could upgrade it to five um, in Clark Rond. I'm not sure if I actually... No, I don't actually need to get to Tier 5. Okay, so we can upgrade one of these towns here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so this should be fine. The amount of money that we've got left is basically gone, so... At this point in time, I'm going to be doing a couple easy sieges here. And, uh, yeah, I don't think you need to see me standing there firing arrows across the battlements again. Um, very, very boring stuff there. So, I'll get back to you guys once we complete another one of these and uh, have cleaned up these sieges.
All right, and we are back after one of those things happened. Now, we got an interesting, interesting thing here. So I can actually add taxes back to there, not that it really matters that much, but let's take a look at actually what we just unlocked here. Uh, I didn't actually know that this was a thing because I've never bothered going down to this shithole place. But um, this place gives you an interesting, unique building chain, the Vaults of Quintex. Um, this gives you a massive bonus to income in the region, but more importantly, Public order minus 60% penalty due to presence or lack of corruption faction-wide. It also gives me uh, 30 uh, growth and 800 uh, income generated. So this is a really ridiculously good building. Minus 90% penalty due to presence or lack of corruption faction-wide. And plus 100% income from the region and 1,000 income. This is an amazing province. Um, I don't really need to have this building in here, so we're going to get rid of it. And um, I also don't really need that building in there. But... Yeah, wow, I am really happy that we managed to get that. I would have actually almost beelined that. Um, we aren't only relying on that. We've also got, of course, the um, Vol's Anvil down here that we've uh, got upgrading away here. The Temple of Vol, um, upkeep minus 10% for all units, all armies. So this is a faction-wide bonus as well. So there's a bunch of things going on here that are just, just going to make me ridiculously wealthy pretty soon here. Um, we're already up to 13,689. Um getting a little bit of money, of course, from that attack there. Uh, so, yeah, we've still got this one battle to do. I'm going to actually figure out what I'm going to do with these Defense other guys the here. Um, I definitely think there's going to be some stupid little, like, barbarian stack up here uh, doing whatever it is they're going to be doing. Not really sure what uh, to deal do about that, but... Well, other than, I, I guess we kill them, but, uh, yeah, like, the thing here, Mung Encampment being here instead of somewhere reasonable, like, where the hell is Iron Frost? It's like, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's like, oh god, all the way over here for that one, and we got this one, and then Bear Isle, like, it's, what the crap, like, so that's gonna take us a long time to unify that northern province there, so that I can start getting the, um, uh, uh, morale, or public order boosters in, um, but at least now, actually, we've got the means to get rid of some of the malice from all the chaos corruption that is in this province, because there's quite a bit, and I don't have the means to get rid of it right now. Um, I'm going to need another mage that's got that sort of ability to reduce the, um, actually, why don't we not demolish the mage tower right now? Let's go ahead and see if there's a hero that I can recruit um, that's got what I want here. I don't really care too much about the administrator perk. Like, that's good, but it, it, it's I'm, I'm patient enough to not worry about that. We do have an entrepreneur here. Okay, so I think what we actually do is we... Stop upgrading one of the buildings that I've got upgrading. Um, let's figure out what... Probably that uh, thing that I was upgrading in uh, Vol's Anvil, since I don't need the level 3, um, this thing. So we get rid of that. And let's go ahead and add in yet another entrepreneur into this region. Because, like, I don't need it right now, but it's going to be so, so good in a, just a little bit when this province gets fully online. And I've already got an industrialist in uh, Grand, so that's uh, going to be fine there. All right, so cleanse corruption a little bit there. Actually, I don't really need that anymore. Oops. Still, you, you know what? That's still actually a good skill for me to have, probably. I, yeah, I think we still go with two of those. We go with, like, three specialists, and that's going to be our, our go-to here. So after that, we can get rid of this ta uh, tower since we still don't really need it, per se. Um, so that's going to be fine. And, uh, yeah, we're down to just 28 bucks, which is pretty nice to see that. Um, we'll have some extra money uh, for taking out, um, wherever the hell this is, Ashrak. Um, and that'll get us the full province of Grand here, so we'll be able to start growing that a little bit faster. But, uh, yeah, no, that's looking pretty good there. Creeping corruption, I think we've got pretty low corruption queen. there overall. Um, I'm wondering, like, what are the odds of something bad Why happening if I try to auto-resolve this? I know how to save scum and if something bad does happen, but so let's fight. give this a try. And I'm guessing, like, we lose... Way more stuff than we're supposed to because the game's a dick. Fine. Seize the city. Does mean I'm gonna have a slightly harder time if they attack me here, but realistically speaking, these armies are pretty lax Maybe as far as what they've got there. Even after recruitment, Foolish they're probably request. not going to be strong enough to attack me, so uh, they're I'll I'm not sure what their princess. universal army pool looks I'll like though. They might have a ridiculously large one for all I know. Um most important thing, favorable winds, we already got that. After that, darken the skies. Uh, plus 20 to reload skill for all my units. And a fairly large radius is an amazing ability. After that, I'm going to start working towards getting dragons uh, and stuff like that. So, Grand as a province, unified. Perfect. 
um, Ashrak here, uh, we've got actually our first set of obsidian trinkets. Now, there's no research associated with these, but having that has, as you can see, massively boosted my predicted income. And the reason for this is that I'm now trading in an additional resource to a whole bunch of different people. Uh, we are going to get rid of the Elven Gardens. They don't really belong here. So that doesn't really uh, help us any. But uh, yeah, there's still quite a lot of Dark Elves to um, crack our way through. But I think realistically speaking, they're pretty much out of the running. We've taken a lot of their high income provinces and really sort of gimp to them as far as their ability to actually fight back goes. Um, Arnheim here, I'm, I'm really liking what Arnheim's going to be like in just another turn here. Um, plus, like, income from ports everywhere is going to be uh, also just kind of uh, really nice there. Um, if I recall correctly, what was it? Income from uh, ports, all regions, right, uh, plus 2% from that one. Yeah, so that's going to be quite nice. Um, Hopefully that uh, is going to boost our income up somewhere pretty good, but also Vol's Anvil uh, dropping the price for everything else is going to be really nice. I can't get to any of these uh, explorations, unfortunately, like not realistically or not really easily. And we're still just going to continue ignoring the ever-loving hell out of these um, Dark Elf admir Admirals and stuff like that. Actually, what the hell? I think there was a unique building here or something like that. I can't remember. There's something else about the Elven Colony on Arnheim that was supposed to be special that I can't remember what it was. Like, it's got this sort of icon here that tells you that it's got the, uh, increases, in, I don't know. Anyway, um, let's see here. The Moon Shard. Yeah, so getting down to there is actually going to be a bit of a pain. Getting up to Iron Spike and then continuing our way down towards, like, Titan Peak and stuff like that. Like, I'm not even at war with those guys, I don't think. I might be able to skip past them and get down towards whatever is over here get towards the moon pool and the falling gates and stuff like that but realistically speaking i should probably be clearing out this crap um especially i should find sildri tor um but to do that we might just take a titan peak might be the easiest way to do it either way i've got like what 12 turns to get down there um so I really want to make sure that we're trying to get down there relatively quickly with these guys. I do want them to like have full health before I actually disembark them into the water so that they're not getting completely screwed over there. But we might even have to send in uh, our Port Elastor army from here. Uh, they also need to recover a little bit of their numbers before I put them out to sea though. So anyway, that's going to be our turn for now. We've got like 41 turns before that 200 mark, but I don't feel as though this is the sort of game where you can practically speaking I think you can get um, to 200 or a two, turn 200 victory with this game, um, but I don't think it's as easy as it is in even like say uh, Rome 2 Total War, where I got a two, turn two. I've had a turn 200 um, full map conquest. Sans the fact that there's a certain breaking point in the game where your uh, income goes into the negatives, um, so I actually could not have gotten to two, turn 200 without going bankrupt. Um, Ironically enough, but I was able to get the entire map uh, under my control before 200 um, and then the game crashed because I don't think you're supposed to do that. Um, Empire Total War, you can also take over the entire map before two, turn 200. Uh, a bunch of other, other maps, you can do that sort of thing as well. So uh, it is actually possible to do that in most Total War games. This is by far the largest map though, and I'm not 100% sure that it's that easy to do on this difficulty. Um, usually I do do it on Legendary, but it is not fun. Uh, the one other one that actually that I can't do it on is um, uh, Shogun 2 to or Total War, um, the, the Fall of the Samurai uh, expansion. The other ones I can do it, but Fall of the Samurai is so reliant on um, allies and stuff like that that it's much harder to sort of flip sides and then declare war on all your allies uh, than it would be in any of the other ones. So that one, I guess, is one of the exceptions, but even so, um, you know, Anyway, uh, that's going to be our video for today. Hope you found this enjoyable, and of course, as always, hope to see you guys all next time.